Arsenal NSL is the Arsenal powered control surface script for the Novation Remote SL. It's compatible with all the original models, including the 25SL, 37SL, 61SL, and 0SL, which I'll be using in this video. As a side note, the unit that I have here is pretty old, and the backlight in one of its displays is failing, so you'll see some flickering in this video. At any rate, Arsenal NSL can run 48 encoder modes of your choosing and ships with the following encoder modes. Volume, Pan, and Send mode from the encoder Mix mode pack, and Device mode from the encoder Device mode pack. The function of the encoders and encoder accessory buttons is determined by the selected encoder mode. These buttons are used for selecting encoder modes. Starting on the left-hand side, the up and down buttons are used for navigating up and down. When shift is held down, they can undo or redo. So for example, I can delete this clip and then undo or redo that. By default, this display will show the names and values of the parameters assigned to the first set of encoders. When this button is held down, the lower line will show the functions assigned to the encoder accessory buttons. When this button is turned on, the display will show the names and values of the parameters assigned to the knobs. And turning on this button will revert to the default display. Both of these buttons are dual functional. So for example, I can momentarily hold down this button to see the assignments of the knobs. The pads will play the first eight visible pads in the drum rack, and they're set up chromatically so they can also be used to play other instruments. And one last thing to cover on this side, by default, the encoders offer relatively coarse adjustment. When shift is held down, they offer very fine adjustment. On the right hand side, the up and down buttons will select the group of eight tracks to control. When shift is held down, they'll navigate left and right. By default, the upper display line will show the names of the eight tracks being controlled, and the lower line will show the values of the parameters assigned to the faders. When this button is turned on, the upper line will show the names of the parameters assigned to the faders. And this button is dual functional, so I can momentarily hold it down to see the parameter names. The upper display line is also used to show notifications. So for example, when switching between encoder modes, this line will show the name of the selected mode. By default, the two button rows are used for muting and arming tracks. With muting, if pressed quickly, these will toggle, and if held down, they function as momentary switches. With arming, these will arm tracks according to your preference for exclusive arm. When shift is held down, they'll do the opposite of that preference. When this button is turned on, the button rows are used for soloing and selecting tracks. With soloing, if pressed quickly, these will toggle, and if held down, they function as momentary switches. Also, these will solo tracks according to your preference for exclusive solo. When shift is held down, they'll do the opposite of that preference. As far as selecting, if a track is already selected, these will toggle the arm state of the track. If the track is a group track, holding a button down will fold or unfold the group. And when shift the cell down, these will select the track as well as the playing clip on the track if there is one. The buttons used for selecting this functionality are dual functional, so you can toggle between them as we just saw or momentarily switch between them. The transport buttons do exactly as they're labeled, but they also have shifted functions. When shift the cell down, rewind and fast forward will jump between locators. Stop will lock modes to the current track or unlock them. Play will continue playing from the last stop point. Loop will toggle the metronome. And record will toggle automation arm. 